Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to play some games with Dragapult Charizard. Now, Dragapult is a stage 2 dragon type Pokemon with 320 hit points and has the attack Phantom Dive. For Fire and Psychic, it does 200 damage and we get to spread 6 damage counters on our opponent's bench in any way we'd like. So that's a pretty powerful attack. It's just kind of an awkward attack cost. That's why we have the Charizard in here to set it up and as a secondary attacker and it's really good for early pressure too. Its ability Infernal Rain says when we evolve it we can grab three basic fires from our deck and attach them to our Pokemon in any way we like. So we can put two on our Charizard and then one on our Dragapult for later, it's pretty cool. And with playing Dragapult we get the bonus of playing Dracloak as our draw engine. It has the Recon Directive ability that says you can look at the top two cards of your deck once during your turn. Put one in your hand, put the other on the bottom of your deck. So it's like comfy, but you don't have to loss on the cards. It's really cool. And you're going to want to go second with this deck and play an Arvin for like Buddy Poffin and TM Evo and evolve up a couple of your guys. If you go first, you can just get down Rotom and draw three and hopefully start a Buddy Poffin in your hand. And since we're going to be going second and just TM Evoing, Unfair Stamp is a pretty good option for an ace spec. We can disrupt our opponent early if they take the knockout. It also lets us draw five cards ourselves. It could also be Prime Catcher or Scoop Up Cyclone are pretty good options as well in this deck. And we have Temple of Sinnoh, mostly for Lugia to shut off their Mist Energies and we can knock out their Mincinos when they put them down. Artisan could really be a Lost Vacuum or just any other stadium. I think you could also cut the third Charmander for a third Nest Ball, a fourth Ultra Ball, or a second Counter Catcher. That's really up to you, but it is nice to just have more outs to the Charmander because Charizard, you kind of rely on it to attack, and it's also just a really good attacker. It's really hard to attack with Dragapult on the second turn of the game with any versions of the deck, so you're more likely going to be attacking with Charizard at the beginning and at the end of the game. But yeah, that's the deck list, so let's get into the games. Alright, so we won the coin flip and I chose to go second. I think I always want to go second with this deck. You want to Arvin for like Poffin and TM Evo. And we do top deck the Arvin, that's kind of lucky. And now I can just get Poffin Evo and Poffin for Charmander and Dreepy. Just checking the prizes here. Rotom is prized. I think I prized like an Ultra Ball. And can't remember what else. It's kind of hard to do this on two times speed, so it's hard to notice everything when it's just scrolling through that fast. But I'm just going to evolve the Dreepies first because our hand is dead. And I want to get into the two Dracloaks so I can see four extra cards next turn. And I can always candy the Charizard. There's really no rush to do that or to get a Charmeleon. It's just kind of there just in case like you already have Charizard in hand and you might as well grab it just to evolve and start attacking. My opponent has a pretty decent second turn here. No Curlias, which is kind of unfortunate for them, but they can TM Evo up into two Curlias. Alright, so my goal for this turn is to just get into a Charizard and start attacking, start putting some pressure on. I get Ultra Ball right away, so I can definitely make that happen. And I can just grab this Arvin here. I don't know. I think I kind of make a mistake with this Arvin. Whenever I decide to get it, because I second guess everything, I grab another Ultra Ball, but in hindsight, I probably should have grabbed a Vessel and just established my Psychic Energy on one of the Dracloaks, maybe like the opposite one that I put the Fire Energy from the Charizard on. As you can see, I'm like just really kind of second guessing what to get here. I don't even know what to get. I'm just playing it because... I have no other supporter to play and I want to grab this TM Evo to just Ultra Ball away so I don't have to get rid of two resources I want to keep. I could get rid of the Forest here as well because the Rotom is prized, but I don't need the Super Odd right now and at this, the way the game's looking right now, I'm probably not going to need the Super Odd or more than one. I don't even know if you really need two Super Odd in this deck. It just feels bad at, like having your energy be so like spread so thin and not have a way to get back a bunch of them can just take a knockout here and yeah if that ultra ball was a vessel i could have vesseled away the forest seal stone and put a psychic on probably the other dracloak i don't know it's kind of hard to say because my opponent's got a small hand are they really going to find a boss and an attacker i suppose they could because guardy does play a ton of counter catchers it's just not a risk 
that I would take. I think I would put it on the Dracloak without the energy. But they evolve up into their third Curlia here. They're playing a Nest Ball. And they get a Greninja, which is an interesting choice. I don't know, you would think that they would trade first to see what they got. Because they probably want to attack this turn. Like, this is a perfect Mimikyu turn. If they make me retreat off uh, both my energies to attack this uh, Mimikyu with my Dracloak, that would be really unfortunate. But they put a Fluttermane down, which doesn't make much sense at this moment. And you're going to see why in a little bit, but and they get the Mimikyu, that's funny. But attacking with Fluttermane in a matchup like this is not good. It just kind of can get your energy stuck. And you, as Guardi, you want access to all your energy, so... When I'm playing Guardi and I'm gonna like I just think Fluttermane's the best attacker and it's a matchup like this where I don't want the energy stuck on, I won't use it unless I didn't use my collapse already and I have it in hand, or I have a Turo in hand for next turn to just pick up the Fluttermane and put all the energy in the discard pile. Cause right now it's basically it's doing the same exact thing that a Mimikyu would have done, which is just put a little bit of damage on this Charizard, soften it up, and get it ready for a knockout. But I get lucky on the second Dracloak, and I do hit a boss, and I am going to boss up this Gardevoir. I can even establish another fire so that I don't end up like not having energy attachments ready. I'm thinking about playing the rescue board, but I don't know where I'm gonna want that yet. I might even want it on the Charizard if they don't knock it out. I can just knock out this Guardi and be in a pretty good spot. I'm in a very commanding lead. They have three of their energy stuck on the board. So even at this point, their odds of knocking me out are not the best. And they fill their bench with the Monkey Dory. I also don't know why they played that collapse. They should have just held on to it. They really weren't affecting me. Like my bench is fine. I have what I want in the bench. I guess another Charmander would be nice, but it's really not the end of the world. If I wanted it that bad, I could have just not benched the third uh treepy they're just doing their trades that is what i from my experience playing gardevoir ever since the rotation is the hardest part of the deck now is just what to trade away before it was super easy you had level balls and evolution in or not evolution in sense uh fog crystals to like grab extra cards out of the deck to trade away or to get energy to trade away and now like everything in your hand is always a resource that you might need later and as you can see, they're getting rid of like their Arvins and stuff last turn. And that could definitely come up. Running low on supporters and Guardi now is not very good. And I just grabbed the Charmeleon because I do not need the Defiance Band right now. And I, those were just really kind of two bad selections. There's nothing, I don't need any of those cards. I was hoping to find a Psychic Energy or a Dragapult so that I could Arvin for the other piece and start attacking. I grabbed the Ultra Ball because they're setting up my Dracloak to be knocked out with the Monkey Dory ability. So even if I don't attack with the Dragapult this turn, I need to evolve that up either way. And off this reset stamp, I could possibly hit a Psychic and start attacking with it, which would be very nice. If I did have a Psychic in hand and the reset stamp was a Prime Catcher, that would have been kind of an insane turn. I do get lucky enough to hit the Vessel. I can just get rid of this Sinnoh. I kind of want to keep their bench locked more than I want to free up mine. So I can grab the two Psychics. I want to leave the fire in the deck to get with Charizard. And I can just start attacking with this Dragapult and probably put all the damage onto the Curlia to threaten a knockout next turn with the Dragapult, even if they are able, even if they do heal the 30 off of it. And I'm just debating here if I should evolve to this other Dragapult and I don't know, it's a really tough choice because they could pretty easily do 90 damage and find one of their two or three counter catchers and bring up my Dracloak. But I don't know if they're going to be doing, you know, 310 damage. So I just evolve it, sacrifice all my draw because my board's pretty set up at this point. So I'm pretty comfortable to just be able to take the next two prizes with the Dragapult and the Charizard. And now I have Ultra Ball Rare Candy in the deck, so even if they knock out, or in my hand, so even if they knock out this Dragapult, I can get out another Charmander, get my last Fire Energy, or Charizard, get my last Fire Energy, and attack with Dragapult next turn. They're gonna Nest Ball here. 
I would imagine that they're going to get a Drift Loon if they play a second one, because I think, yeah, there is one in the discard pile. I'm pointing out that Mimikyu is kind of scary. I have no way to deal with it right now. That was kind of an oversight by them. They, they probably wanted to put that down sooner. They do get the Iono, and I get a Candy and another Iono, which, whatever, it's fine. It's not a good hand. It's not the worst hand. And they do end up conceding. I'm guessing they didn't find the knockout, which I doubt they were going to find anyway with that Screamtail. They needed a ton of energy to knock out my Dragapult. It had, what, 60 on it? So 280 they needed, or 260 they needed to do? Yeah, so that's all, yeah, that's seven energy. I don't think that was happening, but let's get on to the next game. So my opponent won the coin flip and made us go first. This is a fine hand as long as the Rotom is in the deck, and this is a perfect example of why I'm playing the Rotom in here. Because I can grab the Rotom. I got lucky enough to draw the forest, but either way, I still want to be able to draw with Rotom this turn to get more options for next turn, so I can get a Buddy Poffin with the forest. It feels kind of bad burning your forest this early, but it's just what you need to do in these setup decks. You have no choice, you just need to set up. And I'm just debating what I should get if I should get two Charmanders or a Charmander and a Dreepy. I maybe should have actually got, I don't know, that's a hard choice. Two Charmanders might have been correct though. I do need to establish um, draw support on the board, my Drick Cloaks. But Charizard is really going to be the main attacker in this matchup. Because Roaring Moon can knock out a couple attackers, but a lot of the times a deck like this kind of burns out. And then they play the catchers. That made me nervous. If they were able to knock out my Charmander, that that put me in a really tough spot. They research away the bundle. Eh, maybe they should have just played that bundle and forced me to send up Rotom. They have already committed to the more Peko knockout though, so it makes sense why why they wouldn't do that. It's, that's so strong for them to be able to take a prize while moving their energy to safety. And I was just double checking the Dracloak, make sure it has free retreat. Or one retreat, I mean, it should have free retreat. Dragapult's really fast in the video game. And it's one of the fastest Pokemon and should definitely have free retreat. I think it's one of the fastest. It's very fast, I know that much. All right, and I just evolve up here into the Dracloak and then play an Arvin. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about using the Recon Direct ability first, and if I got a Psychic, I could have Arvin for Rare Candy, so I think I probably should have done that, or if I got Rare Candy, I could have Arvin for Vessel. I probably should have used the Recon Direct first, but I was kind of thinking I wanted to use it to build on my next hand after the other end of the Unfair Stamp. And I really have no interest in knocking out this more Peko right now. <clears throat> so I can just take the rare candy here. This shouldn't really be too much thought to it. And this is kind of my plan for the turn to retreat into the Manaphy. I prize both of my TM Evos though. That is kind of the crappy thing. Because my plan was to Arvin for TM Evo and try to use it. But I prized them both so I couldn't use it. So I just retreat to another one prizer and instant charge. I, I really felt no pressure to knock out this more Peko. It's just going to put me on odd prizes and risk my Dragapult being knocked out. So I just didn't need to do that. I can take the turn off and still win with a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize trade. Because, yeah, they're going to bench another two prizer at some point, no matter what this kind of like what this deck does. They do have baby roaring moons, though. I... Did not expect that. And they Ultra Ball away their V-Star and an Ancient Booster Capsule, I think. And immediately Super Rod. Eh, I guess they wanted to thin out their hand, but playing the Ancient Booster Capsule would have been really good. Because it would have saved their Roaring Moon EX here. And they got to think that I'm not trying to knock out this one prize Pokemon. It's not one-shotting my Charizard next turn. Like, I don't know, they definitely should have played it and then used their uh, Mew ability. They were a little too tunnel visioned, I think, on thinning out their hand as much as possible to attack with this one prizer. But I guess they were under more pressure to take the knockout because it puts them back on even prizes. So I don't know. 
it's kind of a tough decision because not like getting ready your only uh, capsule that you had is really rough in this position. I'm just going to grab both these psychics out so that I can pretty much get this dragapult ready to go. I hit a dreepy, which is kind of perfect. And I still hit another psychic, even though I thinned two of them out right before using the ability. So now I can counter catcher, evolve and attach and have a backup attacker ready to go, which I'm pretty sure is what I do because I saw that they played counter catchers. They're not one-shotting my Charizard, so another thing that they'd probably want to do is knock out my only draw Pokemon. That does sacrifice my only way to see more cards, but I don't know. Eh, it's arguable here if I should have evolved it or not. I really wanted to get down the energy attachment onto the Dragapult, and the only way to make it remotely safe is was by evolving it, so I just chose to do that. They flip another catcher, so if they hit heads on that, they would have been able to knock out my my poor Dracloak anyway, and then I would just be down. I would have no options once this Charizard goes down, so I think I was kind of forced into doing that, no matter how awkward it is. This deck is kind of weird. Like I, keep, I was running into a lot of positions like this where I would just like run out of Dracloaks or they would knock out all my Dracloaks, but I would have like such a strong board set up that it wouldn't matter at a certain point. And I wonder what they're trying to knock out. Are they doing, they're not even doing enough to knock out my Rotom. So maybe it would even benefited me for them to take a, like flip a heads and take a singular prize there because it would have really done nothing for them. They need to knock out my Charizard and my Dragapult or my Rotom. And I, I was really struggling with what to boss here. It seems like Mew is keeping them alive. But if I knock out the Mew, they just attach to the moon and come up and knock me out. Now I can put the boss and the Arvin back. I probably should have just put boss because that is the only card I need. And Arvin basically gets me nothing. Yeah, I'm overthinking everything here. I, that's, I've that's i been trying to work on that. I tend to second guess myself too much when I'm doing stuff and it makes me play pretty slow when I should just like start at least in the when I'm not playing in like a tournament or anything just do the actions that I think right away and get used to playing a little faster but it's kind of what I thought they were really relying on that Mew but they would have been able to knock me out with the drag or uh oh but if they had knocked me out with the roaring moon I would have just won so maybe I should have just knocked out the Mew yeah that's another mistake I should have knocked out the Mew. They, oh no, because they can knock me out with the first attack. Yeah, yeah. So that was correct. Since my uh, Charizard already had damage on it, they could have done the 220 attack. I can't remember what it's called. But we top deck and Iono. They only have one card in deck. Um, thinking about just retreating to a one prizer and seeing if they deck out. But that seems kind of dumb. And also, if I don't knock out this Roaring Moon, they can knock out my Rotom with their Dark IV start. I'm having trouble thinking of names right now for some reason. Yeah, so I need to get this Roaring Moon off the board. This is just kind of an awkward turn. I don't even know if I should play the Super Odd, but I kind of want to play the Super Odd to have an option to attack with Charizard next turn. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. I use the Pokestop there to see if I can get into an Ultra Ball. And then I could have Ultra Balled for a Jacloak and try to get Boss off of it. And I just, I think I go, I put two energy back. So I have the option to evolve into Charizard and retreat. Or if I draw the other energy, I'll still have one in the deck. And I do hit at least a Jacloak off of that. So I can grab Boss for next turn and now no matter what, I can knock something out. Get that, uh, more Pekka was on the board, so I can always do 70 to that if I need to. And I'm kind of like weighing the odds of what is more likely to happen here. And I was debating retreating into the Charmander and just getting rid of their stadium. But then they would have a win condition with Darkrai V-Star. And this way, I can put three on their Roaring Moon. And if they knock out my Dragapult, they also knock themselves out. 
a lot of people won't do that and it puts us in sudden death and if they if i go first and get a turn two charizard i do have decent odds of getting the first knockout if they well i need them to miss the knockout right but if they do i win so i go for that and they do get the pal pad so they would just win if i didn't knock out the or, uh roaring moon because they'd well they would have to retreat i don't know i think they had enough damage in there to knock out my my uh rotom with their moon 120 so they would have been doing at least 150 i don't know they might not have had a way to win either way so not really too sure about that because they didn't have a way to get out of the active interesting i didn't quite think about that during the game i don't know roaring moon's not like the most meta deck right now but it's the same idea as like a raging bolt or something just a two prize beat stick and dragapult normally struggles against matchups like that but with the charizard you are able to handle it a little bit better than you would be able to but dragapult like against these kind of decks you can set up a four prize turn but you need to kind of one shot to take your last prize and charizard allows that i think I don't know. I think this is the best way to play Dragapult that I've seen so far. And it's definitely the smoothest feeling list that I've played with. Like Charizard is always a really good option. It's kind of a broken card in my opinion. So you might as well play the broken card with the other new good card. But that was Dragapult Charizard. I think that's definitely going to be a force at NAIC. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was the best performing Dragapult variant. Hope you enjoyed and take care.